It's Tuesday night on A2DRadio.com from the Real Talk Studios. This is Birds of a Feather coming at you live with Chrome, Pete, Kevin, Chucks, Mr. Ryan Brodo on the ones and twos. We're brought to you by Gibson. Uh, no, we're not brought to you by Gibson. Mayer. We're brought to you by <laughs> Specialized Physical Therapy. Woo. Hey, I'm still rusty. We're brought to you by Specialized Physical Therapy, Dr. Paul Vidal, our doctor. You can find him in Burlington, Cherry Hill, Princeton, New Jersey. You can find him on the web, specializedphysicaltherapy.com. No appointment necessary. All your specialized physical therapy needs, hit up the doc. Go check him out. Our topic of conversation tonight, brought to you by ATS Sports Picks. Use the promo code A2D and get 20% off all first-time purchases. Get the big package, guys. Make it worth your money. Win some friggin' money on A2D, and let's do it. ATSSportsPick.com. Topic of conversation, offensive coordinator, guys. Jim Caldwell should be the hire for the Philadelphia Eagles at offensive coordinator. Agree? Disagree? We're live on Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, uh, YouTube. You'll also be able to check out our shows as well as this show, as well as all of our shows here in A2D in podcast platform. Ryan always has to help me with one. I'll try my best. iHeartRadio, um, SoundCloud, Spotify. Apple Spotify. Podcasts. ITunes. I got it right. iTunes. iTunes. <laughs> I'm trying to be correct. <laughs> Google Play and Spreaker. Spreaker. I don't know what it is. So I never, that's why I never remember it. We're on Spreaker. I should get on it, though. We should. Um, but looking forward to talking to you, fam. Lots to talk about. Lots to digest over the last week in regards to the Philadelphia Eagles as well as playoff football. None of us have a horse in the race. Uh, Not at all. Have a, I have a half a horse. I have, I have two half horses. So Probably yeah. back for you guys, probably both back halves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have asses. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, speaking of, no, I'm just kidding. No, yo, no, I'm yes, just, yeah. yeah. Speaking of asses, <laughs> <laughs> these guys are terrible people, terrible human beings. Anyway, moving on. Viewer oh, so discretion is advised. <laughs> Something was moving. All right. <laughs> uh, this is where we need a behind the scenes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> terrible. <laughs> No! No! There's a Birds lot of, of context not in this no! conversation. God, Birds of please, a feather no! after dark. No! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> the stuff that, that <laughs> comes up on Birds the internet. Birds of a feather night moods. <laughs> Listen, Twitter is a terrible thing. The things that people release on Twitter is an awful thing. I hope. I hope we never get to that we're, point. We're, like we're I want it. I want us to get a... fame. But I don't want to ever get to that point of fame where well, they can release something. To, well, that's what yeah. you have to do. Yeah, well, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> Let's, anyway. let's get to the fame part first, and then we'll yeah. worry about the, the rest. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So moving on, <laughs> we're going to talk about the Eagles coaching uh, dismissals as well as potential players to fill some of those roles, other names and other roles that were released today. Um, Heinz Ward, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, what was the other guy? Bobby Ingram. Bobby, Bobby Ingram, Ingram. Some really interesting names out there. Um, and, and our no huddle. Somebody's finally losing a beard tonight. Yay! Really no interruptions. Karen is no more Karen from the studio. We will not be Karen Hate to see it tonight. Hate to see it, buddy. Love to see it. They may have exchanged numbers. He may just text right. her a couple. Like yeah. now, can you? Yeah, this is the garage. Come over now. She's, oh, in gorilla, she's in gorilla position. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for her cue to come in. Uh, worked out perfect. Kevin has time. our speed dial. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> did you leave the ball in alley yet? <laughs> <It's gonna> <laughs> <laughs> Kevin terrible. stopped by the house last week. You guys are terrible. <laughs> Arrange something. But guys, we want to hear from you, fam. We want to interact with you guys. We want to hear about who you want to see in place for these hires. And listen, we're going to talk about it too. On we're going to talk about it too when we get to no huddle. There's a lot of big sports stories, so yes. we're probably going to have a little bit longer of a no huddle than we usually do. We have a huge UFC fight this weekend. Conor McGregor making his return to the UFC, as well as everything that's going on with Houston right now, with the Houston Astros. Houston Texans? I'm just kidding. (laughs) Well, not not much going on there. Everything going on on with the Houston Astros, uh, the Boston Red Sox. There's been dismissals. There's been guys who have 
mutually parted ways after a lot. And we're going to talk about that cheating in sports. We'll talk and we'll com- put this in comparison to other things, you know, to, to the, uh, you know, all the Patriots scandals and a lot of different things. So it's going to be a fun show, an interesting show. Um, that seat may get a little hot tonight. Kevin. Who, who wants <laughs> a to hairy. kick us off here in terms of the <laughs> offensive coordinator position? First of all, news, Mike Groh is gone. A Ooh. day after we hear from, from Doug that he will be back, Mike Groh is gone. Because so. Jeffrey Lurie stepped in. Yes. Because yes. Jeffrey Lurie was like, no, nope. F that. Uh, no. Yeah. Uh, he's gone. That, and Walsh is gone. You may hear some beat reporters who have three-letter names, not, or, or ES, and I'll let you finish the rest, <laughs> oh. who say that Peterson should have more control. But with most things, the biggest point that, that he was missing – is the fact that Peterson is too close to the situation to be unbiased and yeah. to be objective. And that's where Jeffrey Lurie steps in. And he had to – somebody had to go. You got to go, got to go. Yep. So, bye-bye, Gro. Bye-bye, bye Walsh. The way I see it, it's, it's on Lurie because if mm-hmm. Lurie really decided to um, – not that I, I don't dis, – not that I disagree with the decision, when ha- like wholeheartedly disagree with the decision – but if he knew back in December he was going to fire them, it's on him to make sure he communicates that to the coach mm-hmm. before that press conference. Like, right. not, not during the season, but once the season's over, you have Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday morning to make sure you have that conversation right. with Doug Peterson to say, hey, this is what's going on. I am going to let them go. Just don't say anything committal to them. Right. So that Doug is on the same page, and Howie, too. So the fact that that didn't happen and they weren't on the same page, that's on Lori if that was already his decision from December. Okay. So, Kev, start us off. Should the Eagles hire Jim Because Caldwell? you're the Eagles insider here. I disagree uh, with the poll. I don't think Caldwell's the way to go. Um, I think they look at Gruden first. I like him on the offensive side of the ball more so, um, especially having, you know, Played the team, knowing a little bit of both sides of the ball, having a you know uh, a, a more in depth coaching tree underneath of them, you know a couple of different routes to go on both sides of it. I look that way first, especially at this point since he has not gotten a uh, a nod for any of the open head coaching positions. I feel like he would you know be more open to it now uh, than you know anywhere anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, being being close to what he already what he already knows and so having some ties, so that's my route is Gruden. Jay Gruden, you want to go? I'll go. So up until uh, I seen what Carolina did, um, and they got the hot name. God damn it! The flashy name. God damn it! They got Joe Brady. Yeah. Who just had Joe Burrow look like? I don't. Even, Joe Burrow doesn't even throw another pass until. Uh, week one of the 2020 football season for the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, doesn't need to go to Scotty Calvin. Wouldn't throw. No, definitely no senior bowl. Just chill. Six TDs last night. Mm-hmm. Joe Brady's the hot name. <clears throat> Carolina offered him a lot. I can see that. For me, if I'm going Jim Caldwell, I can see it. And it's, true, it's, it's a two-part for me. So I agree with the question because I think he's seen enough offensive concept-wise, and he is far removed from what we typically see. But also, we've seen him go at other stops, Indy. Also, we seen, we seen the play of Miami and the quarterbacks, uh, especially Fitzpatrick. He always kind of makes things happen. Um, but also in Detroit, where well, he got out of Matt Stafford. Um, that, that, that goes unnoticed because the team as a whole was very mediocre, but Stafford was putting up 4,000-yard seasons. And, and, and he did turn the ball over some. But one thing we all can agree on is that Carson needs to be held accountable Day in and day out. And he and I think Caldwell will do that. Now couple that with a new wide receivers coach, maybe like a Hans Ward or a Bobby Ingram. Um, and suddenly you have something that's you're bringing guys in that are different than what you normally had previously, and also guys with personality and guys with culture. Um, when I mean by culture, I'm talking about their work ethic. We see what kind of player Hans Ward, we see what kind of coach Jim Caldwell is. And he was a no-nonsense kind of guy, but that's – listen, let's do the offense. Get Doug's ear, and let's do that. Jay Gruden, I don't know, because you figure Jay Gruden was an OC, and he was a great OC. And I want to say great. He was above average OC for – and his above – Washington Redskins 
Wood was like that as well. But Marvin Lewis was a defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. He's a defensive minded coach. So Jay had the offense all to himself. Where here, if he's with Doug, it's two guys that kind of want to have the offense in their vision. So I'm not sure how well that would play. Where I think Jim Caldwell would be more more prone to taking the back seat and focusing in his role because let's mighty have had the uh, how far the mighty have fallen because he was a head coach, then his OC, he was a QB's coach this year in Miami. Heard no qualms, no problems whatsoever. So that's a guy who's comfortable in his role and can fulfill that and bring that to the team. I agree. I agree, and uh, I agree to the poll. But that's not to say that I don't have other guys who I'd be right. just as as happy with. Um, you talk about Jake Rudin. I, I really would. Um, everything Pete said is true. But the way I look at Jake Gruden is you just got fired. You're, it's not like your selections. You have a bevy of selections to choose from. Right. If you, if you get an offensive coordinator position offered to you, you're going to take it. You know, um, so I, I don't think that he can be picky about where he wants to go mm-hmm. right now. It's at the point of his career where he has to take a step back and and reestablish his his name and his reputation as an offensive coordinator. And he was I don't I want to say he's more he, he was more than above average in since he has an OC. I thought he was really good. I mean, that offense, you when you have Andy Dalton as your quarterback, who is the epitome of a mediocre like um, you're in um, purgatory kind of quarterback, and your your offense is in the top ten almost every year in a lot of stats. And I'd say that's really good. That's a really good job. And so, and then even whenever I watched, we watched the um, the Redskins play over the past few years with Jay Gruden. It wasn't so much the offense scheme, offensive scheme that was the issue. It was. There were other things, roster construction, lack of a defense, stuff like that. And he still had some levels of success here and there. Yeah. With It's not like they went like 2-12 and 12 every season or 2-14 right. and 14 every season. As an offensive mind, he is really good. And so the reason why I Jay Gruden is right up there with Jim Caldwell, in my opinion, is because if he comes in to this, to, to this, to this team's organization, this coaching staff, he he will bring fresh ideas outside of what Doug Doug is used to. You know what I mean? You, we talk about Doug, and he he already is someone who likes to take concepts from other teams. He already does that, and that's why we have our offense ever evolving. It's not a stagnant offense. You know he you know in the Super Bowl year he introduced RPOs into the system, and then now he introduced um, you know more of the three level concepts when you get with high low reads and stuff like that towards the end of the year. So he's all, always introducing new things. He inst- incorporated more screens later in the year. Is also also that a lot of them look like what Andy Reid used to do. So he incorporates a lot of different things. He's always evolving it. But Jake Gruden also has different concepts that he runs that in Washington, and he took from his time elsewhere that is not a part of this team. So you wouldn't introduce fresh ideas or fresh mind into the into the organization. I think that's good. The other guy that I would mention and be um, very excited for is uh, Mike Kafka. And I know that's Brodo's guy that he's been saying for months. And the reason why I like Kafka, if no, no one already knows, he is the um, was the OC, right, for um, – no, no, uh, He's a – Cool quarterback coach for yeah. – for, sorry, for, um, for Kansas City. And obviously – coming from Andy Reid's system. He's already familiar with the system, but Andy Reid also, who has an evolving offense, has has incorporated things since Doug left that Doug does not, you know, fully have, you know, fully is aware of. Kafka does. Kafka knows all these updated stuff that that Andy Reid is, is doing, so he would bring those fresh ideas. Plus, working with Patrick Mahomes is no small thing. He can take w- things that Patrick Mahomes does bring it to, to here to teach to Carson and bounce off ideas with Carson and just have he's – he's an up-and-comer, and we always like those up-and-comers, even though they don't always work out. Sometimes you know, and sometimes they do. He's an up-and-comer, a young guy who can uh, eventually be – you know just grow and develop as a, as a coordinator. So I think th- those three guys were the guys on my, on my wish list, along with Joe Brady, but now he's gone. Um, along with uh, Kellen Moore was was kind of high up there, but he's staying in Dallas. So those are three uh, that I like a lot. So I'd be happy with them. But I think Jim Caldwell is definitely uh, someone that I would uh, put at near the top. Uh, so I'd agree to the poll. Yeah, so I I agree with the poll as well. 
Um, I like the list that you guys have put out there, all three of them, in terms of Gruden, uh, Caldwell, and, and, and Kafka. For me, I like Caldwell because he is a quarterback guy, and I feel like we need somebody who is going to come in here who I think could understand Carson and coach him in a way that maybe almost like Frank Reich was able to help coach Carson. I think that there's an element of that that's being missed. Here's what I don't like. I don't want one of the boys back. I don't want Flip uh, yeah. back. He nope. failed three nope. times as an offensive coordinator. Please tell me why this is such a – Three like, offensive coordinator jobs. I don't get it. And he has never gotten out past the first year of his, of his job. Fire midseason in Minnesota. Done. Midseason in Minnesota. He comes back Fired as after a quarterback one year coach. Great, but you know what? Even in that role, I want Josh McCown. Yeah. That's who I want as a quarterback coach. I don't know if he would come in, but I would absolutely love having. Well, Josh he McCown. was he was coaching high school football, so I mean, you could step up from that. But I, I know that also he wants to spend time with his family. That was a big reason why he retired before this season originally, um, and then you know obviously he got talked into coming back. So I don't know if he wants to be like, okay, now I'm definitely retired. Let me have some time with my family, and then before getting to coaching. But he's so but I mean, he's just if he wants name, it. Yeah, I mean, he's a name for me though. Yeah, he's a guy who yeah, I'd be bro. interested in that role. If not him, if Flip wants to come back in that role, I'm down. But the dude is not an offensive coordinator. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, yeah, he has had no success anywhere he's been. But I think people are just so enamored with the 2017. Success that he we had here. We need to get off that, and we need to we need to move past that. Like okay. they they want to say the relationship with Carson, great, awesome. But what do you? Br- you're not just a quarterback coach anymore. You're the offensive coordinator. There's there's more to it. That is, th- there's more to it when it comes to that. Go out of that. Is it not possible for other coaches in this league to build a relationship with Carson Wentz? Is it only possible that guys from the 2017 <laughs> season were able to build a relationship with Carson Wentz? Because I call bullshit on that. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Jim Caldwell has had wonderful relationships. Luke Keekley retires. Breaking yep. news. Da, da, Sorry, da, buddy. I didn't give you the bed. Da, da, da. <laughs> well, I, I, I just I, did. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those hips. The official Luke Keekley has retired. Eight you know what, Ryan? Man. Just to make it worth it, too, Josh Donaldson signed with the Twins. So it wasn't a breaking news without. <laughs> 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 and Alex Cora has mutually parted ways with the Red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, breaking news hour here, folks. Breaking news. Breaking news. Joe Brady signs with the Panthers. <laughs> 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 Just all breaking news. <laughs> there it is. That's the one you should have used. Yeah. Is this a mixtape now? Is this a mixtape? <laughs> oh, Remix. Uh, but listen, I mean, I and, and, and even getting into the Deuce Staley argument, that ship has sailed for me. The opportunity to hire Deuce was when you hired Mike Grow. At this point now, with where this team is at, you need fresh minds, Fresh people in the organization. And Jim Caldwell, everywhere he's been, has gotten along with and had great relationships with quarterbacks, and he has gotten success out of those Absolutely. quarterbacks. Even in losing situations, Absolutely. he has helped to develop them to a next level. Absolutely. That's what we need here. There, we need a guy like him who knows how to he's – a, he's a player's coach – but he commands respect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And to me, that's the key. Now, I, I, I like Gruden a lot, too, and, and everything that you guys kind of put out there with Gruden and Kafka makes a whole lot of sense. I'm just looking at, like, as particularly with the people who talk about Flip coming back. And I'm not even talking about, like, social media. I'm talking about, like, analysts who say, oh, yeah. well, you yeah. know, Flip coming back in relationship with Carson, yada, yada, yada. This is a guy that is a quarterback guy that can have that relationship with Carson yeah. without – with who has a track record of success? Success, yeah. As an offensive, as coordinator, an offensive of coordinator, mind, yeah. absolutely, and has at least experience as a head coach. Mm-hmm. Right. And you don't have to go back to a constant failure. And we got to have the bo- the good old boys. We got to get yeah. the band back together. So yeah. I don't need that. Yeah, that's the Flyers mentality. They well, up until recently, they always it brought, was always yeah, brought players yeah, yeah, back, yeah. and we that, don't need that. But that was the uh, that was the old Bobby Clark mentality. Bobby yes. Clark mentality. Yeah. So it's going to be weird because I think. They may lean more Caldwell, 
You got to think about it. Carl has been around a long time, and he's worked with a lot of different people from a lot of different systems, and he's seen a lot. It's going to yep. be a little weird having two coordinators both named Jim. <laughs> so I just want to get that out Jimmy! there. Jimmy! Let the, let the jokes commence. Hey, Jim, Jim Jim. Let the jokes commence. What up, Jimmy Jim Jim? But I definitely, once again, I I'm definitely. I'm already started. <laughs> See? Schwartzy. <laughs> hey, Schwartzy. <laughs> Caldy. 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 Caldy Schwartzy. Caldy and Schwartzy. So, um, but I just think, I think it would be a good look. And I know if they do go that route, maybe we have to say bye to Deuce. I just don't think Deuce will. That's the thing I was going to touch on. He don't, he he. I'm not sure if his if he can take it, but at the same time, let's be honest. I love Deuce. I mean, he's a great running backs coach. He's probably the next best position coach to Jeff uh, uh, next to Jeff Statlin. And by Corey, I don't I don't know what you did to Matt Patricia, what dirt you have on him. But thank <laughs> God you're gone. Um, nevertheless, <laughs> nevertheless, with Deuce, I just don't. I don't see people beating down the door to interview Deuce. I the way so you see what I'm saying, like where else does there's he a have reason to, why Deuce Staley is still here. here. There, let me exactly. let me let me give you an example of that in terms of baseball. As a Cardinals fan, Jose Okendo was a guy who played every position, including pitcher, mm -hmm. the ultimate, the secret weapon, they used to call him, and he was a great infield coach. Mm -hmm. He had been the assistant man to the manager in the dugout before. He had been a, thir a very successful third base coach. And for years, he was one of those guy is destined to be a manager in this league. Mm -hmm. And for years, he stayed with the Cardinals. He was never pro he was with LaRusse. He was never promoted before or after that. Mm -hmm. um, and and it got to the point where it's like you have to ask yourself: There's got to be a reason why people aren't constantly beating down the door mm -hmm. or. Calling this guy and saying, hey, we're calling to say, is this guy available? Can we get permission to talk to him? Yeah. It's just, there's, he's not, either he's not ready yet or whatever it is. He, yeah, I know missing. that, I know that he we had We overvalue that one, people a lot more here than. We do. I, I, I know he and had like that Deuce. one stint in, um, I forget what season it was, what off season it was, where he did get interviewed, I think before the Giants, where he, get, yeah. he did get interest from the Giants. So there is that, that is a definitely legit question. And honestly, I don't. I wish I had an answer to it, but I just don't. Like right. that is that is one question that is is legit that I can't. I don't have a solution to, and it's 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 definitely valid. I know I was talking, I was debating with you, Chrome, in the chat. Like you know how I'd say like you know I'd be okay with Deuce, mm -hmm. and you know I he's not on my wish list as high as the other three. Absolutely, like absolutely, I take the other three over Deuce. Um, the the point I was making when it comes to if they do go that route. Is I can when you have I know that Brian Dawkins on Twitter was adamantly defending Deuce mm -hmm. and pushing, saying he is the right guy. He is the right guy. He he retweeted Ruben Frank's article about Deuce being the right candidate, and he he mentioned Dawkins mentioned how numerous players push for Deuce and and have the most respect. And the way he leads is a good compliment to what how Doug leads. So I mean, th and those are valid points. I, I don't I wouldn't be opposed to it because I would understand that the way he leads and the fact that the fact that was it two years ago when when they went with Grow Over Deuce yeah. I was against it and I, I said and I, I was, was like yeah I was time. like it should have gone to Deuce and I've been pu pushing for Deuce ever since he was he he remained on since the Chip Kelly years when he was on with with the Chip Kelly staff I was like Deuce is going to be a great coach he's on his way right. and he worked himself you don't you don't last through three regimes of head coaches because you're you're you don't you're not talented at, at coaching you're he is he's definitely very very good and so I do not know why he's not getting interest I believe he absolutely should looking at Th these other coordinators are getting jobs around the league. I'm like, there's, there's no way their resume outbeats Deuces. I do not know. Maybe it's, it's, it's some, it's something weary with Deuces' familiarity with the system only and this institute, this franchise. I don't know. But the reasons why you are hesitant to, to, to be okay with him getting the job are absolutely valid, and I understand that, and that's why he's not high up on my list. Because if you bring him in, if you just promote him. There's no fresh. There's no fresh ideas going and, into the and, thing. And, and agreed, it's all the same and, things. And, and to add on yeah. to that too, in the press conference, how we talked about having to have a change of philosophy. Yeah, going absolutely. forward. So yeah. if you are looking to make a tweak or a change in philosophy, 
having the same old guys in these roles it's not gonna is do not a change yeah. of philosophy. Uh, yeah. If we're going to go and get younger now and we're going to put more emphasis and importance on the draft and be smarter in free agency and build this team around your franchise quarterback who's going to start getting paid now, mm-hmm. then this is the time now to bring in guys, and particularly veteran guys, who have been with different organizations through different things, whether it's a rebuild, whether it's a playoff run, who have been through these different coach a team in the Super Bowl steps, so, yeah. right? Different stages of coaching in their careers to bring them in and teach a young team when you're changing the culture and the regime over now. Absolutely, this is the time to do it, that's, not go back to Deuce. That's part of the reason why I lean towards Gruden because if I'm looking at okay, if if you're looking at having a Details like attention, oh, de- like details. attention to detail for this team all season has been lacking. Like, well, details think, need to get there. I think but to what overall. you're saying, Caldwell. It, it, it's saying Caldwell would be the offensive coordinator this season. Caldwell would have shown Wentz what he was doing wrong before Wentz was doing it wrong for those period of weeks. Is what what, what we're saying. He right. has that repertoire. But for me, it's the exact opposite. You know, not not opposite, but it's. Right you wrong player. I'm looking okay. at your running backs, and I'm looking at a guy like Gruden who last year had Adrian Peterson rush in the latter part of his year, his career for 1,200 yards. Right. And if not had been for all the injuries that the Redskins have had, they probably would have had one of the best backfields you know, in the league. He having does have all these running pieces. backs. Look what so, he does with Chris so, Thompson. So, yeah. so let me pose this question to you, and you can look at it from uh, the outside looking in, but you too. Because cause you're in it with me. You're Eagles fans here. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't want to happen is, and the reason why I'm, I'm a little hesitant about signing and going to get a Kafka or going to get like a Joe Brady is because we, we were there. We had it. We had the click. We had the figurehead in it. We had the system. But Frank Wright never tasted a head coaching position. Mike Kafka never tasted a head coaching position. So, Jay Gruden, he may get the urge to be a head coach again. Where I think as Caldwell is so secure in his spot, there you can have him and Doug. Because I don't need another head coach. Kind of like a Schwartz thing. Yeah, I don't need another head coach. Peterson is my head coach. Well, see, that, that's where I'm looking at it is, okay, it's not like a Garrett where he just wasn't re-signed and he was never let go. He is still head coach. You got fired. From a bad see, team, but so see, you're not going to be looking. You, 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 you know that checks the ego right there. Okay, I where where do I have to go to rebuild my game to mm-hmm. get there? And I don't think that it's something that the you know he comes in and says, "Hey, I have to." I I think he make takes this as a learning step and i'm not saying it's a long-term solution it's not going to be there 10 years but it may be a three to five where the window for right now for the super bowl is anyway i got i I think when he moves on i tend to agree with that because i think it's similar to i i don't think jay gruden will never ever get another chance but look at what schwartz what what what's happened to schwartz schwartz didn't do well with the lions he came here as a defensive coordinator and we all thought after one year schwartz is going to be gone he's going to get right but he, it hasn't happened because – and I think with, with Jay Gruden, if he comes in, it will take another few years for him to get that, get that demand for his name. And within that – by the time those few years are up, we already have that window. We can – okay, if he does want to take the next coaching job in a few years, we can get, find another coordinator. But right. I think you can lock it in that he will be here for two, three years at the least – and so, therefore, our window, that's right in the prime of our window. We're in our window right now. Yeah. So, I think that, I think Jay Gruden would be, would be safe. I, I tend to agree with what Kevin said. So, like, I look at, I look at Kansas City. you like, you about to drop something. I was just going to say, th- let's not forget the random fact, though, that the Detroit Lions have never had somebody get fired and get another head coaching job. <laughs> yeah. That's an actual stat. Yeah, that's an actual stat. Really? Yeah. Every head yeah. coach that the Detroit Lions have ever had, we talked about it last year on the show, and obviously that hasn't changed. Yeah. Every person who's ever been the head coach of the Detroit Lions has never gotten another head coaching job okay. ever we, we can in keep, their history. That that can, that organization. We so can keep cursed. that trend, but like you look at someone, you look at uh, all right, look at Andy Reid in Kansas City. They went from Matt Nagy, head coach, but right behind that they had Eric Bieniemy, who for some reason is not getting any head coaching looks whatsoever. I would want to. I, uh, you feel what I'm saying? So I, I I hear you. So even if we go a three five three to five year play with Gruden. Who do we groom next underneath of him? 
A QB Maybe coach. whoever you bring Wide in. Wide receiver your, coach. Yeah. McCown, who I think in? came out of retirement for that reason. To coach. I, yeah, I think he, I th- I, I he really came do. out. I, can see him as I hope coach. so. I really I hope so. I mean, you don't bring a guy like that out of retirement and plan to ever have to use him. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like th- that's a guy that you're like, okay, yeah. I'm going to use you for what you know. You know, you're. I know how old you are being 40 now. You're, I, mean, I don't want to put okay. you on the field. So I groom you to take a position like a quarterback's coach. Now, see, your situation, like uh, with the Patriots situation, is very, very rare. You have so- an offensive coordinator at the top of his game that does not want to leave. McDaniels does not want to leave. So we will not get that lucky. And I'm, just, I'm hesitant. Well, this, the issue is we want him to leave. He just won't go. He tr- he he tried. Why? Why, he why did you take him back then last year? <laughs> if you because just want him to leave, beats me. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't want him. You back. you don't Personally, want him. Yet. I don't you want don't him want back because of Tom Cause, Brady. Because t- no, <laughs> because I was well once Tom Brady. Brady. You no, know I it was McDaniel's fault. Him going back to the Patriots messed it up for Frank Reich. If it wasn't for him, Frank Reich would still be here. You just say, my Eddie. issue is I want to groom uh, Stephen Belichick to be the coach, and I well, don't want to do. hand it off. Oh, you want it to be a family, Your future quarterback's family name run has organization come up tonight. <laughs> from uh, father to son. <laughs> Your future quarterback's name has already come up tonight. Red Rifle, I'm telling you, Andy possibly I'm telling you the epitome of the epitome of mediocrity at the quarterback. quarterback Red I Rifle think. is coming. I tell you who I saw the other night that I want to want to see on this team. Another name that uh, has been sticking around. No, I want to see Teddy Bridgewater Moss. Oh, uh, come on. not a quarterback, but obviously. What about a quarterback? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Name, a name that keeps coming back up. Daddy is Moss. Well, yeah, I wouldn't you, make sense. You I, t- I want them both. You need a Moss tight end played for, for the offense. Yeah. Moss played for the Patriots and his son. It wouldn't make sense. No, it bring bring his dad so, in as a uh, wide receivers coach. We get the, you guys, any you comments going over? Yeah, here? let me Call. let me hit the fam over here. We're gonna do the YouTube first. Yeah, YouTube's really Todd well. Womack, Philly Dilly guys. What's up, Todd? Devin is a Todd beast. Hey. Smith. Birds can wait for the cast. Todd oh. Womack says, uh, "I really do like the sound of Heinz Ward being the wide receiving coach. I think he wants to work with JJ." As far uh, as o- offensive corner goes, I really want Deuce to get his chance, but Jim Caldwell is definitely hard to pass up on. Nikki Stees, hello, happy Tuesday. What's up, Nikki? Uh, Devin says, uh, I don't I don't let him learn on some other team how to coach in the league. Same thing for Deuce. I love him, but if he ain't ready, he ain't ready. Let's get someone who is. Todd says, and if we can see, can we see if Asante Samuel is willing to coach the secondary? <laughs> I know they can tell the cornerbacks to turn the damn head and look for the ball, um, but he can't tackle. He can't yeah, teach yeah, him to I'm, tackle. I'm good with it. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good on it. And now you said Dawkins or something like that. That's a different story. Yeah, I mean, he can't teach him to tackle, and that's the problem here. Yeah. He can't tackle on this no. team. Devin says. Uh, Sheldon Brown. Devin says you got to let the fanboy go. Todd says that was a joke, but we do need a coach that can get these cornerbacks to turn their head. I don't disagree with that. Mm-hmm. Robert Arizona says, hey, guys, just want to speak on some of the moves to make up for coaches and players, coaches, wide receivers uh, for Heinz Ward, offense coordinator he wants called well. <laughs> David Ross says, Alex, uh, Alex Cora got fired. That is bull crap. No, it's not, dude. He's a scumbag. Uh <laughs> Jesus Robert Christ. Arizona says, also need a new quarterback coach. Carson's not as disciplined with his techniques. Exactly. Eddie Sanchez, I hope the Eagles don't hire Press Taylor as offensive I w- coordinator. I would I, revolt. I would be so mad. I would revolt. That that may so draw mad. the line in the I would sand. be curious. Um, I, might, I might have to go all Dolphins next year, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you already went all Dolphins. <laughs> you presented 10 and 6. In fairness, they did give me the most exciting <laughs> part of the season. <laughs> he's, rooting my, he's, he's a Miami Eagles fan. Todd, Todd Womack. <laughs> How about the secondary coach from Washington? It seems they always have a cornerback going in the first round and could give Sydney his fundamentals back. Okay. It's right. not fundamentals. Then. Todd says, what's confidence. good, Chucks? Get ready to scout <laughs> East versus West Shrine game. Uh, Robert says, this sounds like a stretch, but if Drew Brees retires or Phillip Rivers or Manning, they might be decent quarterback coaches. I don't see it. They, they're too rich. They're too rich. Too soon. Too soon and too, too rich. Soon, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's got yeah. the personality for it. That yeah, dude's yeah, going to yeah. make way more money as a television personality. Yeah. And Rivers has to go home to all the kids. So, Yeah, yeah all, tw- you? all 25 of them. Yeah. Question. You know, there's a guy I'd love to see be a, a quarterback coach, but same thing. He's just got such a personality. He's so good on Josh TV. Josh McCown. Tony Romo. 
No, Kurt Warner. Really? I friggin' love Kurt Warner, and I I would love to see him coach. I'm surprised nobody's called up Favre because he's the coach. He, for well, because Favre he still ego. thinks he could play. Favre has how long ego. it took to get that guy out of the league? <laughs> yeah, let's they don't keep want him, him out. Yeah, anyway, let him. Let <laughs> he retired what, five times. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm surprised he didn't try to come back. <laughs> let oh, him he hang, probably wants to. Let him hang out in his Wranglers or Levi's <laughs> or whatever the hell that shit is. Let him do copper that. tone. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> With we're the copper good. tone we'll sleeves. Um. We got the Luke Keekley retiring. Um, Eddie says he thinks another candidate is the quarterback coach of the Ravens. Mm. Eagles champs one says, yo, what's up? Yo, Eagles yo, yo, champs. yo, 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 yo. Over on the Facebook, Tom Arnone says, what's up, boys? Ralph lets us know that Luke Keekley was retiring. Uh, breaking news. In fairness, he did tell us before the breaking news. I know. Yes, he did. I don't know where he saw it first because I could not find it. Uh, <laughs> it was quick. <laughs> Greg says, hey, guys. Sorry, Ralph caught me off guard like the opening to the fix last week. Boom, roasted. Wow. He says, don't really care who the offensive coordinator is. Hmm? The offense is always going to be boring and stagnant under Doug anyway. At least Grow is gone. Who Hashtag fire Doug. I'll give you one guess. His name starts Rob with Brinkley? G and oh. ends with Reg. God. Jesus Millie, stop Christ. it. I mean, I don't know how Jesus Philly Christ. Philly is boring. Right. Uh, <laughs> coming from experience. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Greg. Disagree. Are you figured it out? Truth. <laughs> there are a lot of them that are talking about Keekly getting out before he becomes a vegetable because of the concussion. Right. Absolutely. That, that but no, it's on. okay. Concussions are not that big a deal. For, for Tom Caldwell is his number one choice. Good okay. choice. Uh, Mike Parker says 100% on the field and was going to end with Luke in a wheelchair. I respect his decision. Right. Tay Bennett says Jim Caldwell and Pat Shermer. No. Shermer's going. Oh, no. Shermer's, Shermer's Shermer. gone. Thank God. Well, Shermer's going to Denver. Thank God. What is it about Pat Shermer and John DeFilippo that people want them as OC? Some Tell people me just, exactly. Some people are just built to be OCs, man. Some people are just built to be the coordinators. They don't, they're not. They're not built to be head coaches. I will say this, though. And it's no different than some head coaches are meant to be college coaches and not pro coaches a different yeah. game. Like, I think you can see a very similar arc in Deuce's career that you saw in Anthony Lynn's career. Anthony Lynn went from a running back coach to a head coach, where Deuce, I think, could be as a, will be a better head coach than a coordinator. Than a coordinator, yeah. Because of the we, way he leads. The way he leads. So if you brought, if you did give Deuce the title of offensive coordinator, he wouldn't call you plays. can still bring in a Caldwell as your passing game coordinator and slash QB's coach, you and you're really not losing anything there. But at the same time. The Cowboys did that. That's what the Cowboys did. Yeah. Or you just go get Tony Romo and be your offensive coordinator. <laughs> at least he would talk good in yeah. press conferences. God. <laughs> At this point, I might have want him to be the head coach. He's going to see every fucking play that's coming. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, damn. Look, I feel this coming right now. Watch what they do here, Jim. Yeah, <laughs> Guys, baseball season's back. Stop it. Right? Fuck baseball right now. Hey, Joe Bull. <laughs> Major League. Great movie, by the way. <laughs> this Joe commercial Bull. is on right now. Um, Frank says, hey, yo, sorry to bother you at work. To answer, it would be nice to see it happen. But something tells me that they're going to go with someone familiar with the with the organization or from the Andy coaching tree. I don't think that's true. I, don't know I really don't. Keep saying that. Now, because Howie was so reflective in his press Howie, conference. Howie, Howie, what wants to do different? If that was going to happen, it would have already happened. Yes, they would have been yes. readily. Yes, it's presented. almost like they're waiting for somebody. My Kafka. Jeff Lomayer wants to know. They may be waiting for a question. couple more weeks. Can college assistants interview for professional coordinator jobs while they're still in season? I was hoping they'd interview Joe Brady from LSU, but was shocked he went to Carolina so fast. I wouldn't be. I mean, that's not shocking to me because they their only NFL team who hired a college coach, and you obviously see David Tepper is willing to spend that dough, for real, for real. Like I think, and LSU was about to offer him like two mil to be a, a coordinator. So, well, Tepper's Tepper yeah. is one of the richest men. He will, like Tim and Balmer, right? Like I think they're the richest. Yeah. Owners and I, professional yeah, sports. Yeah, we're up there. Mike, we're up there. Mike Parker says, if we land Gruden at offensive coordinator, our head coaching monster, our head headed, our three headed monster coaching staff looks pretty nasty. If you hired which one? I'm sorry. Gruden. Gruden. Yeah. Mike, I think. And I then think Mike Green th says Josh McCown for offensive coordinator. No, uh, Josh not that soon. Josh McCown for for QB's QB coach. coach. Yeah. As a QB coach, you don't. I don't think your commitment. Is as deep as it would be for a coordinator, so you would yeah. have that work-life balance. Yeah, you don't have to leave. And hell, where are you going to go? You fucking tore your hamstring. Mm -hmm. 
but you got a rehab in Philly anyway, so you might as well do it. Mike says, bring Filippo back or however you spell it, only as a quarterback coach. Who? He said, bring Filippo back. Nah, I thought he said, he said it's quarterback that. coach. He said it's quarterback coach. No, but I added that part in. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> he didn't specify he either one. Oh, okay. But if you're Flip, would you do that? Come back. No. Come back. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going that far back. No, no. People forget. These guys have They fired. didn't they, when when he was fired last year from Minnesota, we could have brought him oh, back. Yes, we could have. We didn't. So he's not coming back. If he didn't come back by now, he's yeah, not coming, he's not back. coming back. He says yes, McCown is an awesome, awesome person. I think he would be great at offensive coordinator. Um he says I can't wait to see the progress in Greg Ward Jr. and Boston Scott next year either. I kind of agree. I'm excited to yeah. see where, where, if that carries over. I'm not over. sure. Boston, yes. I'm not sure how much more potential Ward has. Which he is has I'm, a little bit. Well, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm cool with him now. Like, you, slot, yes. I'm cool yeah, with yeah. him now. Slot, I, that's all I need him at. He, slot, yeah. Let him take Nelson's spot. Did you not see Jamar Chase last night? Did you not see T. Higgins I did. last night? We don't well, have wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. T. Higgins, can we can we can I ask you something? Because this is my first time watching him. Really? Is he supposed? Yeah, I don't watch college. Oh, I'm sorry. until Jeff time. Is he really that's like he seems slow? He's 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 a bigger lumber guy, but you can't get Jamar Chase because he's only a sophomore. Now Higgins isn't no C.D. Lamb. He's not no Lavisca Chanel. He's not no Jerry Judy. He's not no Henry Ruggs the third. Yeah, if he um, doesn't have if he doesn't have that big play deep threat ability, I don't I don't know. But we'll, we'll get into him. I just th- that shocked me. I thought I, I was expecting this this tall, lanky, like playmaker, like who's a deep threat, but he looked really slow, and I was like, there was "Why a, is he so well regarded?" Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I'll watch uh, more. Well, he played for Clemson. They had twenty nine game win streak, so I mean, you you get a lot of a lot of pub and press and pop and circumstance point, when, when yeah. your team is there. But there was a couple. There was one player at Clemson that stood out for me last night. Yeah. It's a position to need. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, Mike, Simmons. Move, all right, moving on. Mike yeah, says, I personally think it should 100% go to Staley. He deserves it. I think we're stuck in this <sighs> hard guy's bubble. Mike Parker says, oh, my God, can anyone throw the checkbook at Tony Romo to be the coach or the offense coordinator? <laughs> I'm in. Well, hold on. I'm you're going to have to not even You're going to have to beat in. ESPN because ESPN is about to throw a Get whole ton of money. To, 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 mil? to do what? To, to replace. To Parker replace, said um, Tony Romo is the sexiest um, man alive right now. Um, Booger? Yeah. 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 Yo, he's about to make bank. Yeah. No no one has topped Madden's, I believe it was $7 million as a uh, – this will be it. As an uh, analyst. Oh, that's is, it, is, it, is, his, uh, is his contract up with CBS? No. They can buy it out with $10 million. Yeah. He, it's not up yet. Uh, Dude, my dream, my dream duo in the booth is Mike Tirico and – and Tony Romo. Yeah. The two best. That would be That would like, be sweet. Oh See, I like my God. I like Nance a lot though too. No, Nance is good. Nance is good. He's good. He's good. He's good. I'm not I'm not hating on Nance. I'm just saying Tariko has been my favorite play by play guy for to years. Me, Na- Na- I, I, oh, you don't want like Al Michaels and Tony Romo and Chris Jesus Collinsworth? Christ. Jesus Christ. You mean Mr. Mr. Asleep the whole time? <laughs> Mr. Hey, it's a touchdown. No, I'm good. Yay. Mm-mm. Jeez, Al Michaels. Um, Mike also says I'm all, Mike Rain also says uh, I'm also glad that Jim is staying our defensive coordinator Tay Burnett says Romo would make a great offense coordinator but he's smart because he's smart but could never put it together in Dallas uh, Brodo that's Brodo talking he says uh, Ryan Brodo in the chat says Nick yeah. Foles is quarterback coach he'll probably have some free time <laughs> by the way I'm totally <laughs> 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 Jeff Lomare say, says, um, Duke down six to Clemson with a minute left. That's huge. That would Clemson be a played two nights in a row. Upset. Clemson, Clemson is, playing two two nights in a row. Wow. Number Big three, Duke Clemson. to lose the if they lose the Clemson, that's massive. Is Memphis still number? Is Memphis still number one? I think so. I haven't really followed college as much this year. Oh, it's over. Oh, we're talking basketball. Yeah, bro. What do you think? Yeah, what you thought we were talking? I was joking, saying Clemson football plays two nights in a row. No, thought we were talking two. about water polo. No, you didn't say football. <laughs> you said Clemson plays two nights in a row. You didn't specify. Oh, okay. All right. Get your I shit together, said. Chucks. All right, I'm trying Ooh. to. Sh- oh, did my shit? Ooh. Shit in the toilet? <laughs> You're disgusting. <laughs> Eddie N is the next next Le'Veon Bell. Wait, what? Uh, Etn? Tra- no. Etn? No. Horrible comp. Horrible comp. Jeff Lomare says, "I want 
uh, I want Delpit from LSU in the in the worst way. Who? In the first in the worst way. Who? Delpit. Delpit. I don't know, dude. I just started my work, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, Parker agrees with you with Tariko and Romo. Hell yeah. He's a safety. And he says, what the F was that laugh track to Ryan? Uh, Lomair says Gonzaga. <laughs> uh, now this is what I know Jim Nance for. This is better. He's better. Golf? He's oh, better golf. suited for golf. Yes, yeah, he's oh. he's got a, one of those voices, dude. He's good for anything. Jim Nance really? is really good. Uh, Philly 0024 says James Urban, the quarterback coach for the Ravens, is my favorite for offensive coordinator. <laughs> I just I, I look at what Lamar's doing and I and I see what we have here. I'm not sure. Trust it's me, I want really I want to go I want to go outside the box with no, with the new type of philosophy, but I think that may be too far. Great, there's a great question from Eddie. I'm going to read it after I read Philly's other two comments. He says T Higgins has deceptive speed, and he says Heinz Ward would be great wide receiver coach too. Wasn't the fastest guy or the biggest, but was a great route runner and run blocker and just a fundamentally sound guy. And he's part Asian. God. <laughs> so Eddie Sanchez asks, do you guys believe Carson should get comeback player of the year or Ryan Tannehill? No. Neither. Two. Neither. Neither. Who should get comeback player of the year? Jimmy G. Jimmy GQ. Jimmy GQ. Jimmy GQ. Jimmy GQ. Jimmy GQ. What? He played the whole what? season. I don't know, man. I'm looking. Comeback player, he was out and he hurt. He was out the whole. So was Ryan Tannehill out and hurt last year. Yeah. And Ryan Tannehill was a, came into the season as a, st- as a backup quarterback. He didn't have his job handed back to him, and he carried that team to the playoffs. Yeah, so but no, and I, res- I respect Tannehill that. Tannehill didn't carry his team to the playoffs. That's also yeah. not a comeback. Well, Derek and Derek showed Henry. up. Him and, and Derek Henry. You refer to him he, by his name as King Henry. Jimmy, Jimmy G <laughs> has... Was the best. Listen, Jimmy G was the best third down quarterback. He's only the and, second and Henry on my list under Mark Henry. Okay, he don't he pales in now, comparison. Those, that's <laughs> those those two big some bitches right there. <laughs> Father two, and son. Father <laughs> and son. It's two big some bitches right there. <laughs> but as very few people that I, I would not try to test, Mark Henry would would be one. Like you got that, sir. You, I <laughs> I personally I don't know that I would give it to Jimmy Garoppolo at this point. I mean, and I would, I, when I'm looking at a guy who was a backup quarterback who's been mm. written off in this league, who was basically cast off of the Miami Dolphins to come back and be the quarterback of a team that went to the playoffs. And yes, I know Derrick Henry is obviously a massive part of that, do but one running back does not carry a team to the playoffs. They just did. They, he, he did. Just he, did. He just My did. issue he just is did. the the window of proof for him break. is small. Yeah. To not have played the full the season. Full season. Yeah. And Jimmy G's been doing it all year. Team and so at probably him. the best level as far as overall Jim- quarterback play And Jimmy, goes. Jimmy G's team is, you know, obvi- the Titans are too, but Jimmy G pl- playing all year, helping leading that team all year, and the fact that they've gotten this far from where they were before last year, it's it, it, you can't, like, that, that's a big resume this year. And I'm not hating on Tanny because Tanny should be one of, the nom- like, one of the nominees, one of the candidates, absolutely, I think. Right. I think I don't think Carson Wentz. I don't think it's it's nah. not too much because if you're talking about comeback, Carson Wentz still had a good year last year, d- despite what the narrative is. He actually statistically had a good year. Carson so Wentz there's nothing to come back from. I don't even so, consider Carson because Carson could have played with that injury. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't count Coles. him. I don't count him. So it, so T- Tannehill, Tannehill and Garoppolo would be absolutely two of the two of the candidates. I'd still go with. So with you would Jimmy. go with Jimmy. You would go with Jimmy. Jimmy, his you team would go with is Jimmy, more spotlight. I go with Tannehill. Ryan, who would you go with? I'd probably go Ryan would go yeah. Tano. So three two. His name is Ryan. Come split, on, you split Ryan decision. to go against another Ryan. Hey, I got no more respect for Tano. I'm not going to speak ill will. I'm just yeah. calling it as 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 I, th- I think. I think Jimmy, Jimmy G has contributed team. more to his team's success than Tano. Yeah. Because the scary part is San Fran is just now getting healthy on the defense. Oh, dude. That's, that's, <laughs> oh man, I D Ford, Quan. 
I, and and Tart, jeez. Yeah. I think I think and the, Sherman leading the league in interceptions. Mm-hmm. And I think NFC the NFC championship is going to get real ugly real early on. Sunday. There's a there there are two players that I'm going to bring them in no hold on San Fran's defense, but I mean that that defense is fast. Well, I mean we're we're going to talk about the the playoff round, so you don't even have to wait till no huddle. You can bring it up now if you want. Go for it. Are we going to break soon? Nah, I we you were. probably have. Well, I don't know because we had the. I thought we. Are we? When, when, when are we, we doing break? When are we doing? Uh, five minutes. Two minutes, yeah. Okay. So we'll, we'll do right. it on the So on the other side, we'll do that. On the other side, we'll do it, yeah. All right. So we are all in agreement somewhat. You're not about Caldwell as OC. A lot of conversation about right. bringing so Caldwell, OC. So Caldwell, 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 Ryan? Uh, Kafka. 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 Or Caldwell. Oh, yeah. You say Garrett. Gruden? Or Gruden, yeah. So I swear. I, I think almost, we're all good with I almost do my headset guys. where you say Garrett. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Don't I you ever. Pulled, I must pull the Clippers out <laughs> now. <laughs> Like I think we ain't waiting on that. <laughs> we're all pretty much good with the three guys. Like yeah, I mean, I think we're all, none of us are objective. Is there any? Wild can I go back? Can we'll I go back to to why I like Heinz Ward? And you kind of were touching on it earlier too, and it kind of goes with with what I was talking about the culture change. Yes, Heinz Ward is so well respected, and you talk about guys with personality, yeah, and guys who have been a mentor to young guys as a player. Who I think that that could really translate. And I know somebody, I don't remember who off the top of my head, I apologize, in the chat bought I mean, it was Todd Womack bought up that he could come in and work with a guy like a J.J. Yeah. I think a white side. Because he wasn't the fastest. And, 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 yeah, and his build, or his playing style is a lot like J.J.'s should yeah. be that I feel like that guy who comes in, who has also learned under some of the greatest coaches in this league, yep. his entire career with Bill Cowher, I'm not a big Tomlin guy, but he's had success in this league. I'm not saying he's a bad coach. Right. Yeah, I think yeah, he's yeah. overrated. No, yeah, 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 Mike, yeah. to learn from Mike Tomlin is a big deal, too. Mm-hmm. And played with a strong arm, underneath type quarterback. Right. And how many, I mean, look at some of the coordinators that he's had as well. Bruce Arians. He has learned from some really good guys. And I feel like, man, to bring a guy like that off the Bill Cowher, listen, we've had enough, I've had enough of the Andy Tree people. Yeah. And uh, I don't need any more Doug tree down here. Give me somebody <laughs> from the Cower tree. I don't want the Brady tree or the, the Belichick tree because they all suck when they leave New England, minus Mike Vrabel. So, <laughs> well, it's early yet. I like Flores, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna judge. So, if you yet. bring in a Heinz Ward before we go to break, if you bring in a Heinz Ward, it's gotta, you'll find it very hard to bring in a guy like a Kafka. Or maybe even a Gruden, somebody that does that Heinz Ward doesn't respect, or doesn't he'll respect Carwell. So you have to look at this as one fluid unit, and they all have to sing Kumbaya and play along because you need Ginger Jesus. I don't to think take it's that. It. I don't think. I don't you know can that, he would, that he wouldn't respect. I don't know that. I'm not saying, saying respect, but I'm just when you talk about a Heinz Ward and and the day and age of the football that he played, that era of football. That's where Caldwell came from. That's where maybe even the Gruden came from. Yeah. And they played against each other because he was OC at Cincinnati while he was still playing for Pittsburgh. So you may get that there, but I just – I fear what the – once again, I fear what the Kafka, as soon as his name gets hot and he starts to get a head – because you – Offensive coordinators, when you, once you're hot, your head coach, you, your head coach opportunities just come to you. Yeah. Stefanski doesn't deserve that job in Cleveland. I don't give a shit how how much he wowed them. They're just making the same mistakes all over again. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all <laughs> over again. <laughs> With that, we're gonna go to break. Thank you to our sponsors in the first half, Dr. Paul Vidal at Specialized Physical Therapy in Burlington, Cherry Hill, Princeton, New Jersey. Find them on the web, SpecializedPhysicalTherapy.com, as well as ATS Sports Picks. Remember, guys, for all you junkies out there. Promo code A2D gets you 20% off on your first time purchases. Buy a package, win some money on A2D. Let's freaking roll. Uh, on the other half, or on the other side, we'll talk about uh, the playoffs this week. Chucks wants to talk about 49ers and some players. Just p- playoffs in general, baby. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk Good about weekend. some of the other goings on. And somebody's getting. Just so you guys some know. Some hairless uh, attitude over here. Karen's locked out. <laughs> this is happening. This is happening during no huddle. So, you got where, it, where guys. I got it. He I said, got, where is she? I got towels. We're good. We're good Where's to go. She? He's looking for the hot tag. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we'll catch you guys on the other side. Thank you. <laughs>
Yo, you know what that song sounds like? It sounds like, go back and watch like the old Fall Brawl War Games. The intro. When they were intro in the, the, the actual match, it sounds just like WCW generic track number 17. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. Birds of a Feather live on A2DRadio.com. Get my Eugene high. My Eugene, Eugene wave. <laughs> we're back, guys. Chrome, Pete, Kev. Chucks, soon to be beardless, Kev. <laughs> this is the way. This is it, guys. <laughs> Karen's locked out. This ain't happened. She's There's back no from bowling. No interruptions this week. Uh, she didn't heat. <laughs> she didn't heat. No Kevin's saving call. grace. No saving grace this week. We're brought to you by. <laughs> he was part there on purpose just for come over. Son of a bitch. <laughs> we are brought to you by specialized <laughs> physical therapy, Doctor Paul Vidal. In Burlington, Cherry Hill, and Princeton, New Jersey. Find them on the web, specializedphysicaltherapy.com. No appointment necessary. Go see the doc. And as well as our topic of conversation that we talked extensively in the first half. Um, brought to you by ATS Sports Picks. A2D promo code. Get you 20% off your purchase. First time purchase package. ATSSportsPick.com. Good come. Jim Caldwell should be the hiring for the Philadelphia Eagles. Agree, disagree. We'd love to hear more candidates from you guys. We talked extensively about Jim as well as some other candidates that we all liked. Um, we talked about some of the other coaching vacancies. But we want to get into this week's playoff matchups. Playoffs. 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 Talk about playoffs. playoffs. And this past weekend. And Shucks. Shall we uh, kick it off with uh, San Francisco? Francisco? A little, yeah, of uh, course. A little reflection. A little re like recap. So, get it, let me just say, heading into this the, the this past weekend of games, and I know a lot of people were you know on, on the ATD group. They were like, like, oh, everyone's picking the Niners. I I don't know if I'm just dealing with a, a bad bad group of football fans. Probably. But a lot of people, a lot of friends, 
And a lot of people that I interacted with online, they were picking the Vikings. They're like, I think the Vikings. I actually, I, I have to the say, Vikings. the Vikings should have been there in the first. A place. lot Look. of people were picking the Vikings. And in that and game. you know, for for and you guys know, and you know my why I've been so bullish on the Niners is because I've been backing them for years now. So me pushing them all season as if they were like my second. Well, they are like my second team. Is is I, I I admit to it. I have no qualms about it. I, I'm pushing them I can't because, say yeah, I know because you're the same as me. I don't root <laughs> against the Phillies, and it is the same <laughs> league, so I can't I can't give them a hard time. Yeah. They're in the so, same conference. So the Niners, I've I've said it since the off season. They were going to be the division winners. I said they are an up and coming team as long as Jimmy G stays healthy. They have a lot of young talent. People thought I was nuts. I still have the list of names on Facebook that called me out and said I was crazy. Wow. And I just, I've been nice. Not good. Yeah, I'm, I've, I've been nice not calling them out, but Chuck's I have has, the list of Chuck's, names. Chuck's is like a, like a psycho. He has I like am, a hit I'm list. petty. I am petty like that. All like right? he legitimately <laughs> like a psycho. Right. <laughs> like a psycho. <laughs> like a psycho. Yeah, I, I have problems. So <laughs> I, I do. I have problems. So I know. And I know all the people. And I've never, the thing is, I've never backed a non Eagles team. Heading into a season like I had the Niners because I was so confident in them, oh. and I knew what they had, and now everyone has seen as the season goes on that that they are a really really good team. And Kyle Shanahan is the truth. He's one of the best coaches in the league. It's not his fault he didn't have a quarterback the past two seasons. So that being said, going into this weekend, a lot of people picking the Vikings, and I took that as disrespect, and I was like, listen. You, you, you know, my one friend was like, my one friend was like, nah, I don't think even even before the the, the wild card weekend, he was like, I don't think the Niners are are a powerhouse like the Saints and the and the Packers, I think, and the Ravens. I think that if we if the Eagles were to go into San Francisco, we we'd kill them. I'm like, what are you? Are you kidding my me? I'm scared of the Niners. Sick. Are you kidding me? And like, the, I I had would have this conversation they hit all list week. Like Chuck, they might all actually week. kill them. <laughs> 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 so, so I like I was I'm like I Don't see you all say these that people. My team is gonna kill my team. I see all <laughs> these people like you know betting against the Niners, and I'm like, is this like why? Like, do you like, if you really know the teams, you would see that this is a bad matchup for the Vikings. Yeah. They do not match up well with the Niners at all. I have a legitimate question for you. Yeah, this, this was presented to me in 2011 for when we were on our break. No, 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 no. <sighs> I mean, I, we don't. We all know who won in 2011. <laughs> that being said, when the playoffs started in 2011 and the Cardinals were facing the Phillies, Which they I had have it presented been. to me. If the Cardinals win, who are you rooting for? And obviously, it's the Cardinals. And then I had the whole, if you know, if the Cardinals lose to the Phillies, you can't root for the Phillies for the rest of the playoffs. And I was like, you know what? That's fair. You're right. I can't. Like, I can't be like, I can't I can't go to, like, the parade. I can't be a fanboy about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So my thing is, if it was, like, the Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers, I obviously know you would root for the Eagles. Obviously, yeah, yeah. That being you. said, though, would you still, like, jump on and be a fanboy for the 49ers the rest of the way? Like, if they had beaten the Eagles? Yes. <laughs> well, I would root for them, yeah, because it, it's not – I've been consistent the whole time. I this have been year. consistently so a Cardinals been, and Phillies fan the whole so time. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, to me, to me, like, if like there I, was one team, if there was one team I'd be at peace with losing against, it would be, it would have been the Niners. I'd be like, okay, they're a better team, See, like and my, I'd like the players. My, so. my, I agreed with the philosophy of, if I'm going to hardcore root against this team, I can't then jump back on the bandwagon after. I, I should at least for that playoff run have to follow it out. Not to say I can't want to see them win. But I can't be like, yeah, man, my man, my man, uh, Ryan Howard hitting home runs over <laughs> here. Yeah, Joe Blanton, Jolton Joe over here crushing home runs in the playoffs. I get, I get what you're saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I get what you're saying. I, I would have sat back quietly and just watched and and quietly rooted for them to myself. I get I what you're saying. Like, hey, I'm a <laughs> Phillies fan. We're in the World Series. Let's fucking go. Well, I think. Well, I never said I'd be. I'd be. I'd say I was a Niners fan. I, I'm just saying I've been pushing for them and I've been rooting for them for this right. long. There's so I'm not gonna going I'm on. not gonna I'm not gonna stop. You can boo all you want, but I'm consistent. So, so <laughs> scared <laughs> me. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that. So that being said, go seeing how the game played out, 
I am pleased to to push. Uh, there were a few guys on Facebook in the group that once the game was over, I was like, oh yeah, look what happened. Hey, so the <laughs> specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will, I will give the list of names once the Super Bowl is over. We'll see what happens. Okay. So, so that being said, like the way, just now getting to the game, the way that that it played out. I mean, a lot of people were saying like the Niners are going to be rusty. I don't think so. There was a difference between why the Ravens looked rusty and the Niners looked rusty. I think the the Ravens didn't have to play a real game game for a long time. The Niners in all of December were in tight one score games down yeah. to the last second that really tests you and that that helps you prepare for the playoffs so I, I had no doubt in my mind they would be they would come into the game and not be rusty and they weren't they weren't rusty they had control of the game pretty much the whole time and what i will say is that the the vikings came out and, and scored on their first possession the cornerback that was defending Diggs, Akella Witherspoon was the starter in the beginning of the year he got hurt Manuel Mosley came in played great Witherspoon came back from injury and was horrible. And they've been flip, flip-flopping between the two all season. And toward the end of the season, we're like, you know, I was like, why are you putting, why are you sitting Mosley? Mosley now is the better corner. Right. Right. They went with Witherspoon. He got beat. They pulled him. Mosley was the starter the rest of the game. And Diggs was pretty much on, on lo- he didn't have another touchdown the rest of the game. But what really jumped out, and this was going to be my no huddle, but I saw this yesterday. And I posted on the group today, really jumped out to me, and is a reason why this team really does remind another reason why they remind me of the seven, 2017 Super Bowl Eagles is because once he was pulled and benched, Kella Witherspoon went to the special teams coach and he said, Hey, coach, pull, coach pulled me. Mosley's in at my spot, but it's all good. I'm good. Give me all of Mosley's special team reps because he's going to need that energy to play on defense. So he took. On his own, at like accord, took his reps on special teams so he could contribute. That kind of mentality, and it's not you know there are players like that on on a lot of teams. I, I'm not right. saying that's exclusive, but that just shows another element to the Niners that yes they are young, but they have that 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 championship mindset that the 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 team is more important than your own the name on the back of their jersey. True, it's about what this end goal. Is, is you know they have a chance to really accomplish something when no one when no one believes in them. Not, a lot of people still don't believe in the Niners for God I don't know why, but they don't. And that was the same thing in seventeen, two thousand seventeen. A lot of people didn't believe in the Eagles, even in the playoffs. They didn't believe in the Eagles because we came out of nowhere from a six and ten. I think we were six and ten the year before to a Super Bowl contender. People weren't on the bandwagon. All year, they kept we kept getting doubters, and it's the same thing with the Niners because they came out of nowhere. People don't believe in them, but I see the way they play on defense. I see the coach. I see this team and their chemistry. It seriously does remind me a lot of the e- of the Eagles, and that's why I think they really do have something special in, in in San Fran this year. And I think they will win it all, and I think that's commendable and it deserves a lot of respect to have someone who was supposed to be the starter, and got injured, has had his replacement come in, play better than him, mm-hmm. got his job back, got an opportunity when he came back, but still got beat out, but still has that team team oriented mentality and, and wants to do whatever he can to help the team and right. help his teammates. I think that's that's great to see. And I, a, a big big respect to Witherspoon because anyone there are a lot of cornerbacks and you know corners, they don't they they have high egos like wide receivers. They have to, you know, be very confident, very you know, confident in themselves and their ability. To swallow that pride and ego just the way he did says a lot. So that that's awesome to see, I think. And I think the you know we have to just I I just gonna say I'm say, been saying it all year. The Niners really have to get people's respect by now. Like how many wins is it gonna take for the Niners to prove that they are a legit team? How many tough wins against legit teams is it gonna take for people to start believing in them? They're, they're gonna win the Super Bowl. And people are still going to be like, ah, now nah, it was a fluke. Like, come on. it's They are a really, really good team with a really They might go coach. to the Super Bowl. I don't know that they're going to win the Super Bowl. They might not win. They might not win, but I believe they will. I think I Kansas think City's going to have a Kansas lot to Kansas City say about is that. going to be, yeah, I think I think Kansas City is going to be a good. I, I hope it's Chiefs and Niners because that way I'll be happy either way. If the Chiefs win, 
Andy Reid and That's Patrick Mahomes. Super Bowl, I would thing. definitely be engaged. I would be really yeah. excited about that Super Bowl. Right. For me, you know, watching that game and listening to people talk coming into the game, you know, comparing the 49ers and the Ravens, what people have to realize is there's a difference between rust from sitting and not playing and age and experience throughout the playoffs. And we had this conversation last week is I thought that the 49ers would show more of the age and experience not having, you know, had many players in there, being a little bit younger and their veterans right. having not had done much in there, which they proved me wrong. Outside of the Ravens, I think that's the team. Not, I don't think it was Russ. I think it was definitely the H. It was a lot of, you know, you younger guy mistakes. A lot of bloom coverage type Their stuff. One there was rec- uh, who was it? Um, they had a lot of drops. Yeah, yeah there, there, there's yeah. a lot Seth of stuff. Drop a lot of drop, yeah, there was a lot of mistakes that you know, being in a prime time game, you know, being in, in a big stage to get, to go to the uh, to the championship game and play for the Super Bowl and being in a, a game that pretty much you should win. You know, everybody, you know, heavy-handedly putting their bets on the Ravens to win it. That, to me, is the, you know, age and experience factor, which a lot of teams have to, you know, watch moving forward is, hey, how young do you go and how cheap can you get to build these all-star lineups? But as far as the, you know, the 49ers go, if you look at guys at their youngest position with Bosa, he's playing – I, I think if a, if a rookie was to win Defensive Player of the Year it's gonna be him. outright, it's him. It's him. Yeah. That guy, you – Unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. It's yeah. it, it's almost unheard of to come in and produce as quickly as he has. Yeah. It's unbelievable. He makes that defensive line something, like, absolutely special. And that's another co- parallel with the Eagles is that they get there with their front four. They don't blitz. They get there with the front four, and that's what the Eagles did in 17. You know, they didn't have an elite pass rusher the way that – you know that Bosa is, but overall as a unit, that's how they win with with speed on the outside, creating turnovers, and that front four getting pressure. It's it's such a similar formula, so it's great to see that on you know from the Niners on that defense. And they need to do it now because I think their 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 front four is all first round picks. Yeah, and yeah, at their, there's going to be a time where people are going to start wanting to get paid. Exactly. So exactly. Now's the time. I mean. The, the way the Titans dismantled the Ravens, I mean, I, the Ravens were close. And essentially, if you look at the Titans-Ravens game and you look at the Texans-Chiefs game, it was very similar in the fact of where the Titans had – the Texans had the Chiefs on the ropes. But what the Chiefs did when they came back, they were scoring touchdowns. And for some reason on, on Saturday night, the Ravens just couldn't put the yeah. lines or they couldn't yeah. get six. And they were settling for three. And then King Henry, man, by that fourth quarter, I said it like – you don't want to tackle that man. Mm-hmm. Like you don't. You may. You may go through the motions, but the effort sure as is, sure as is hell ain't there. Earl Thomas. And um, and that third and one, <laughs> that third and one in the second quarter where they ran that outside zone and he hit that hole. And then, dude, like I remember, uh, it was one Ravens player, it's Matt Yuda. I might be messing his name. Came unblocked and tried to tackle him, and he bounced off like like he was a like a pinball machine. Mm-hmm. And when you had that four or five speed at that size, man. Titans for for like it's and then what the Chiefs did with the Texans, Bill O'Brien being Bill O'Brien, and the same short fields that the Texans were getting, the Chiefs didn't. The Chiefs started to get and they punched them in, and that that game got out of control really really early. And Green Bay Seattle man just kind of hitting everything. Was that twenty four to nothing at one point? Yep, 20, 24. 24 to nothing. me that was the game that showed the rust. Yeah, to me that was a rusty. That was a, yeah, yeah rusty that was Chiefs, a rusty yeah. Chiefs, and then O'Brien just got. For well, the it, Chiefs are beating themselves out, for the most coach. part. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, with yeah. the, the I went drops, for a walk. passes, yeah, fumbled. Yeah, I came back. It was 28-24, and that was all she yeah. wrote, folks. Good yeah. lord, Bill O'Brien, man, that's 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 what having a a coach like Bill O'Brien will do to you. Not going for it on fourth down when you absolutely should have, mm-hmm. and then a fake punt at that point in the stage, like yeah. a point of the game. I don't get it. But I think the most boring game was on a short Green Bay, Seattle. Year? Bill O'Brien should be fired mm-hmm. this year. Now nah, well, he has too much power. That's a, that's sad. Yeah, 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 it's nuts. It's nuts. Yeah, but he to. should be fired. That's too much power. He like, should be fired. I understand he, by you that. You think he's on a short leash next year? He, he should. Who's the owner? Bud Adams, right? Yes. Yeah, Bud Adams. I mean. Yes, yes, Bud Adams. We'll see. We'll see. Green Bay Seattle was was like the, the was the, 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 the dullest boring, game. The dull game. Of but I will say this, and you guys can chime in if you want to recap anything from the division round while we look at the NFC Championship and AFC Championship. Aaron Rodgers hasn't been Aaron Rodgers all yeah, year. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. But 
his ball game he was. And that's that's the one thing you cannot account for if you're San Fran. On mm-hmm. paper, yeah, everything else as it is, you look at the record of the regular season, look at the teams we're playing. Yeah, good. San Fran should be good. Yeah, if they so, but if he steps into bye bye band mood, man, I feel like And Aaron Rodgers and someone Rodgers. is too, like he's one of those guys like if if he doesn't have a great year, man, playoffs can hit and <sighs> just become somebody different. Oh, yeah, and I think great. the league wants to see that. That would be great. The league wants Pat to see Mahomes that. versus Aaron Rodgers in the Super Bowl would honestly, draw big numbers. If that happens, the Chiefs might win by 50. You think? Oh, yeah. Think? Oh, there's no shot. Yeah. Like, this oh, because with the Green Bay defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No shot. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. This, I will say, go ahead. coming out of that game, you know, obviously ha- having seen what Marshawn done, has done in the past mm-hmm. as far as a player – I gained a little bit more respect for him. He spent, I believe they said, almost an hour in the locker room with uh, Aaron Rodgers after the game. Yeah. He, yeah, le- yeah. he left their locker room to go sit with Aaron Rodgers. And his press, press, press conference. Yeah. yeah. Dude, that was a great message. That I mean, that was – that was for someone that doesn't like talking media, for that to be his, his go away, uh, awesome. Awesome. Telling the awesome, young kids, awesome. take care of your chicken, man. Take, take care of your chicken. Take care of your bodies. Your Same way when you walk away from the game. You're good. You got something yeah. to do, but – the biggest thing I think people forget, like Aaron Rodgers has been in the league since 05, and him and him and Lynch played together at Cal, so that's why that yeah. connection is yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you think this is what Aaron Rodgers' 14th season, 13th season? So we sit here talk about Brady being 40 plus. Rodgers is getting there. I think it's 37, 38, something mm-hmm. like that. And can I can I also say from that Packers Seahawks game, and this is why, and, and you guys know I've been saying this, so it's not because he just got hired by the Cowboys. But this is why I talk about when I when I say the difference of not having Mike McCarthy as your right. coach and why Mike McCarthy is nothing but a mediocre coach. He's not a great coach. And you want to know why? Because a lot of those touchdown passes, especially that one to Devontae Adams, was a play design that Mike McCarthy never would have put together. No, no. You're talking about a slant flat that they adjusted. So instead of Devontae Adams coming on the slat, he cuts it back to the outside, runs a fade. Mike McCarthy wouldn't even dream of doing that. And I hope Jim Schwartz watched Mike Patton's game plan because that's what we should have did the week before. Don't need to stack eight or nine in the box to, to stop a running game that's non-existent. Exactly. And keep your two safeties back and make them yeah. beat you that way. Don't give it the big play. Yeah. So let's give our predictions, guys. Conference championship games. I think we got Titans. Titans and we got uh, the Titans and Chiefs at three oh five on Sunday, and we have the Packers and 49ers at six forty. I think that I it, it's the Titans are a tough thing. For any, it any team unless at this it's point. overtime. It might be. It might get. But I, I th- it th- shouldn't, but it could. The Titans are going to be tough for the pack for the Chiefs because the Chiefs don't have a great run defense. They have a good pass defense. Good great run defense. The difference between the Chiefs and the Ravens though is that the Chiefs can score, score. quickly. Right. And right. that's why they were never out of the when it was twenty four nothing, I said to my friend and I can show you the text message, I'm like we it's believe each other. It's, it's okay. not done. It's not out. The Chiefs have the speed and the weapons to score in a flash, and that is the difference. Even if they fall behind, and even if even if the, the, the Titans milk the clock and win time of possession, that doesn't matter because the Chiefs can score from any part of the field in two seconds. So I think it's, at the end of the day, I think it's just – I think that the, the Titans are going to show – are going to have to pass at some point mm-hmm. in the game. And I, I really respect Ryan Tannehill, but I think that uh, that's just a, too much. The Chiefs are too powerful on offense. Yeah. And too, they have too many players on, playmakers on the in pass defense for the Titans to overcome. I think it's it's like a one-score game yeah, for the I, Chiefs on top. I, I, see, I, I don't even know that it's going to be a one-score game, but – I mean, I do think Tennessee's a tough draw for them for the same reason. Derrick Henry's a, a just a, it's yeah. a game. It's they don't game beat themselves. Theater. That's yeah. the biggest thing. If he comes out and he runs through and owns that offensive or that defensive line and has his way with the Kansas City defense, they have a chance. Right. It's the only way that they have a chance. Time of possession is now, huge. Yeah. For, for the Titans, though, through two games, there's one name. He hasn't had to do much. That's because Tannehill hasn't had to pass much. But Tennessee has a game breaker of their own. And 
AJ Brown, he gets that ball in his hands. He can make some, he can make some things happen. They can't mm-hmm. go down the big boy. They can't go down fourteen twenty one nothing to Tennessee. That they because Tennessee does not beat themselves. Yeah, they play smart, and the, their defense can hold just a little bit, just enough. But once again, when you got Mahomes, special things can happen, man. So I, I look for the Chiefs to go over. Um, definitely an AFC Championship game. I think yeah. this. I think this is Reds. This. This is. This is Andy's Reed's equivalent to 2001 for the Eagles, but with Kansas City. Like this is his. Like this is the time. The time is now. If you're ever going to win one, this is it. This is it. I don't know for the NFC championship. NFC championship game. Well, see, I can't say that. See, I, I, see, I, I, I think he's going to have many chances in the. I don't but know, but man. this is. I'll say this. This is a great opportunity. Right. I just don't think this is going. This might not be. Like the greatest opportunity is going to come in Kansas City. The the Patriots thing hanging over Andy's head is gone. Yes. Yeah. I'm 100 percent with you, Pete. This is the time to get there and get it done. Yep. I don't, and, and I I feel like at this point, and I haven't felt like this every other year that they've been in, that they to me as, and I like San Francisco a lot, but to me Kansas City is the clear cut best team. I don't blame you. In the playoffs right now. I don't blame you. And I don't know that I've ever felt that way with any Andy Reid team including Eagles teams. And I and with a young quarterback like Pat Mahomes and big playmakers on that offense, this is the time to get it done. Yeah. If he can't get it done now, I don't know that I can ever believe that he can get it done. Yeah. It's just it's it's too perfect. That your team goes out in the first round. They don't even have to sniff them this year. Yep. So my pick, because of that exact <laughs> reason, of why the Patriots went out. Um, they wanted Andy to get one? No. Um, <laughs> They're be- being nice. Because of the time of possession, you know, okay. obviously, you know, arguably one of the best two-minute drills in the league, Belichick and Brady. I don't think you – know, I think Mahomes and Reed are there. You know, on that level, but there's two former Patriots in that secondary blocking that deep ball in Ryan and Butler. Kelsey underneath though. I that that's that that to me that's not control that that's short game. If you if you have if if you're going up against a guy that's going to eat up clock like Derrick Henry, True. you're not going to have you're going to have Kelsey underneath all you want because they'll give it to you. They're going to protect the sticks. They're going to make you grind out drives, and it's going to be one of those last person to get the ball. You know, whoever can, you know, grind up the most clock and then turn it like a switch and flip game plans and drop a deep ball over top. I, it's I get it's what you're not going to go. I get what you're saying, but the difference with the Patriots is they didn't have they didn't weapons. Have you can say that in game plan like every team has for Tyree Hill and Nicole Hardman and Sammy Watkins. But when you're on the field and you're trying to contain that speed, I don't care if you're playing two or four defenders back. They had the talent to get by okay. anyone. And you, so, have to, and you have to look at Houston. A lot of times, Roman Cannell, he had the right coverage call. It's just Mahomes is just special. He, he buys time. He, and he and can just make throws that you even, can't cover. You can't cover forever. No. So when Mahomes makes plays and you know buys time with his feet, you can't – a guy like Tyreek Hill, a guy like Nicole Hardman, a guy like Sammy Watkins, that's too you much Byron speed. Pringle. That's too much speed. You don't think, you don't think every think person's – every team's game plan is to cover cover deep and don't let them buy you, but they still go by <laughs> – they still go by deep. And Tyreek Hill is the fastest guy in the league. He will go by anyone you want. Yeah. So I mean, I, I get that, but I think this is the perfect storm for the Titans. I think this is – Get extremely hot at the right time, mm-hmm. and you know, go in and play a team that you know, knows that they deserve to be here. They know they're the top dog left. They know that you know they know their game plan has to get done. Then on the other side of the ball, you have Mike Rabel, who's not even supposed to be in the position. It wasn't until the last week of the playoffs that they even got in, or the last week of the regular season that they got in, saying, you know, at this point. You know, getting in and beating the Patriots, you know, just in the first round, that was their Super Bowl. Right. You know, everything after this point, they're going to do whatever it takes, you know, throw every play that they've got out there, you know, just in order to get there. Absolutely. But what I also say is the Chiefs have had that that nightmare, that that monkey on their backs of we can't win a playoff game at home. Right. And 
they experienced that nightmare again when they went down 24 nothing. But the fact that they faced that, that demon in front of them again, but this time they overcome it, now you're talking about a team that believes that they can go out and beat anyone in any circumstance. So they're going to come out and they're going to say, we can't let that happen. So they're going to come out and they're going to play at their best. So I mean, the same, the same is true the opposite side of the ball, though. You're not supposed to go into New England and win, especially in the playoffs. You're not supposed to go and stop Lamar Jackson running and Mark Ingram, for that matter, out of that backfield. It's you're the same team on the other side of the ball that's not supposed to do those things. <laughs> you're not supposed to, and but they Tyree do it anyway. Kim, yeah, a team is not supposed to come back twenty four nothing, but they did. So I mean, it'll be close twenty eight to three. Yeah. Niners that Packers, happens. real quick before we get to the the the, the card, one big card thing eight. about the Kansas City game, their best player on defense didn't even play last week. He may play this week, and that's yeah, Chris Jones. Yeah. I call him Fletcher Cox Jr. Yep, because yep, he can break yep, a game like yep, that. That's yep. going to be big. Tyron but Matthew is a playmaker. Niners, Niners Packers. Packers. You gonna know who I'm gonna say? Do it right now. You know what I'm gonna say. Niners. Guys, just keep going with the show. We can do this as we're going. Let's go. Let's okay. do it. Let's do it. Somebody's about to get their beer cut. Yeah, we can. We, we can keep going with this. Lift your feet. Karen. So, guys, if Lift you do not little. know, if you're unaware of what this is, oh, weeks God. ago, Chrome and Kevin made a bet. Chrome bet Kevin that the the Patriots would not make it past the first round of the playoffs. One they would and done. lose. They would be one and done. As you know, they were one and done. Therefore, the wager was Kevin would have to get his beard shaved on the show. So that is what is happening, people. Yeah, is Kevin way. is saying goodbye to his beautiful Jason Kelsey like beard. And he is Saying also it's bye. So He's also saying bye to the Patriots and Tom Brady. To but he, but say he goodbye. We're not making him completely. To changed. yesterday. It's only a trim, I guess. It's, it's a trim job. It's a trim job. Believe me, that's well groomed and well groomed. <laughs> yeah. It's going to take work to get it back. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. Best of the week. I, I could talk over this track. You know, this is perfect. <laughs> You wanna? We got a plastic bag. You yes. can keep the locks. The the post the post Brady era of Patriots is going to be ushered in with Kevin's and the newly new trim beard. Andy Dalton <laughs> era of the, era of the Patriots. But listen, so mm. as they're doing that Niners Packers, uh, as they're doing That's that good. Niners Clippers, Packers. Right? Listen, man, I, I, Niners on paper best team, good defense. Zadarius Smith and Preston Smith, they're playing with a lot. I'm just going to say this. I think it comes down to Jimmy G versus Aaron Rodgers. And in that battle, I got to – This is more important. I have a well, feeling. Yeah, it's Aaron Rodgers. You you take Aaron Rodgers. The thing is – Remember, I, they played early this year. Yeah, and they, and they blew him out. But I don't think it's going to be I, like that. Guys, I just right. want to interrupt real quick. It's hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, right. do you have any last words for your beard before I start giving it a shave? No, I don't. Just just get this over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just move on. Fair enough. Just move on. And you so, know Matt LaFleur was under Kyle Shannon. Yeah, yeah. run some system. Some so. system. But what, what I will say is that the, remember that the Packers' run defense is not that That's great. what scares me. So, I I mean, we talk about – It's funny because we talk about Derrick Henry and the Titans dominating on the run game and the ground game. But people forget that <laughs> – Ooh, that's what he she said. He purposely probably did not straighten it just so you couldn't cut it through. Hold on, hold on. Oh, you want me to do that for you? No, no, no. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get a little trim in it first. Okay. It's actually real thick. It stays together. That's what she said. I'm a little busy. But, uh, but it, like, is it? Just because they don't have a, they don't do a power running style with a Derrick Henry right. does not mean that the running attack isn't as dominant. You see what they did to the Vikings once they got that turnover? Right. They ran it like just down ran it, ran it, ran it down their throat. The Vikings couldn't stop. But it. now it was almost to the point where <laughs> it was it was almost it was almost to the point where they didn't trust Jimmy because they didn't th- but they didn't need to throw it. I don't think I don't think it's that. I think. What happens is Kyle Shanahan. He talked about this. Kyle Shanahan is 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 a is really smart and intelligent when he comes when it when it gets to him knowing when it's time to just 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 uh, just kill you right. and, and kill your kill your emotions and, and just uh oh man <laughs> For, by it the way, it looks oh the same God. you got to go shorter than that man yeah, take off take off the number two. 
<laughs> oh, okay. It's still low. Okay. By the way, for the podcast listeners, because people on here said do play by play for the podcast listeners, what would you say? We're about fifty percent of the way done, at least the the, the chin part. The chin part. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll, we'll get oh my gosh! Go, start yeah. lower, lower, start cutting lower. the other way. Cut, cut, cut down. Come on, you got to go as low as the Patriots <laughs> fan <laughs> self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> They're about to lose Brady. You got to go, go pretty freaking low. You got to go as low as the <laughs> Patriots offense. Yes. There we oh, go. there we go. There we you go. You got to go as low as they're willing to stoop in order to win. <laughs> Cheaters. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> there no, we go. <laughs> I see him. I see Kev. <laughs> Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Keep on. Kevin's Mr. Godwin. Here. Kevin's uh, not here. Kevin's not here. Lesson learned. Don't make it back with me. Oh, now my God. Now we got the God. other side. Hand this yeah. to Kevin. Hand this to Kevin. Hand this but to real Kevin. Real quick, my, my score prediction, I think I think the Niners Packers go to overtime. And I think really? I think the Niners I think the Niners win it on a touchdown. <laughs> on a touchdown in <laughs> overtime. Yeah, I can see I can see you that one thing Kyle Shanahan showed me in that Saints game, he's not he's not scared to go for trick plays. And I I'm not sure if Matt LaFour and, and Mike Patton in that defense is going to be ready for that. Um, what scares me is really is the Green Bay Packers linebackers Blake Martinez on George Kittle? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'm not sure what they what they have. I like I like Kevin King. Um, and I, they also got Adrian Amos as well in the secondary. I forget who the other corner is. Who's Jair the, Alexander, man, uh, Jair my Alexander. boy. I think that's going to be a tough matchup because I think Jair is one of the X factors. If he can shut down Debo, right. that's going to make life really hard for Jimmy G in that offense because Jimmy right. G plays well. This game is on Jimmy G's shoulders. I think J- this is the thing. Jimmy G is better than people realize. The thing that Jimmy G – oh, my God. The thing about Jimmy G is that he has so- – Wow, you look good. The only thing he has is don't go off the side. Oh, he looks good? He'll, he'll clean that up. All right, yeah, you can just fade that out. good. That, that side's a little bit longer. That's not as even as – Oh, my God, Kevin, you're a new man. Kevin, we had to take a profile pic for you and put it on, like, uh, one of those dating websites. Yeah. Woo. Uh, guys, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> oh, Kevin will punch. Will punch you. <laughs> guys, Kevin. Kevin looks sharp. I think he's ready to go on Tinder. If he's not already on Tinder. I think that works. I think we gotta take a new profile pic. I'll let him clean the rest up. You didn't get the other side? Get nah. his left, left chin strap. Now nah, he's going straight home. He's going straight home Yo. to fix this. He it's not actually not that bad. That. It's a little uneven, but you got the gist. Oh, yeah, but you can't tell him there. <laughs> no, nah, I've grew, I grew up in a barber shop, so I kind of like I, seen, new man. I wouldn't bet a beer. <laughs> he's like, dude, where is it? Where, where is? It? Feel like that the air, the air outside gonna hit you. You ain't gonna have that protection. <laughs> By the way, a couple comments on Facebook. Jake said, OMG, I came back at the perfect time. <laughs> and then Mary says, you and me both, Jake. <laughs> Karen couldn't stop this tonight. <laughs> uh, so uh, you got anything for no huddle? It was the, the Niners thing. I think the other thing I want to say is it was just announced that the Falcons are getting new uniforms. Really? Yeah. Arthur Blank announced new uniforms. Mary says shave it all. That's her request. <laughs> so we should make another bet. Like, I might have to take it off when I get home and clean it up. Nah, it's not that bad. It's not, it's not oh that bad. God. So, what should you do? pretty clean, too. Like, yeah. there's not a mess. Just, just talk into the mic. Talk into the mic. Like, I'm just, I'm saying. I mean, I'm, I got to do clean up now, but there's not a mess here. Dan yeah. We really tarped him off pretty well. Dan Florido on YouTube. The haircuts are so damn relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for the ones who won the bet. <laughs> when it's not your beard getting cut off. He's a pretty great. Oh my God, he's such a baby. I know. Look he at him. Your voice sounds different. He has, sound, he has, he has, different something, he has a face. He has he a looks face. Like that Patricia when he got the last. <laughs> Damn, you look like, a, like an arrow scientist. Tinder. So, Tinder. Tinder. So what's the yeah. – now you got to do a run-back bet with, uh, with, with Chrome. Like you got to do like a card – what the Cardinals do win the World Series, what the Cardinals win division. Do they make it to the playoffs? Do or they, the, the, do the they Dolphins. Will the Dolphins sweep the Something. Patriots next season? Something. We'll do a 
do another bet next year. Yeah. I'm now, see, when it. I lose a bet, I'm coming. I need, I need to get my get back right away. Well, do a bet well, with I me. Got, you I can shave wait. my beard because I, I can't lose nothing else. I can't lose my curls. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just do the rest of the beard. You I don't go, know about that. you go yeah. hairless. Go, go skin right. This is skin tight, this, man. This go is skin bad tight. enough. Skin yeah, like tight. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. Like I obviously do a double check. I really tarped him off really well. There's yeah. no hair anywhere. Yeah. No. It was perfectly on the floor. I mean, me cupping it so it wasn't getting all over helped it too. But cup. Well done, buddy. Cup, cup, cup. So, I mean, for me, no huddle. I mean, we've seen it. We brought it up. AB needs to be at a site here. Bro, board. it's done. He's done. I, like, I'm, I'm fearful for his well-being. Now, did you know as, the context a, behind that video? That came out. The, the, the she wanted, to, go, she wanted the, to pick up the uh, – The Phantom or the Rose to take the kids to school, right? Yeah, yeah, or something like that. She was picking up something. She got keys to the house, was trying to get inside the house, but he didn't want him or her inside the house. He claims that she was trying to steal the car, but, I mean, I, I, regardless if that I, happened, I'm, it doesn't excuse you from doing what you listen, did. I'm I don't a, care. There's a lot of guys, and me and Chucks were talking about it. Like, I, I don't watch a lot of Undisputed and First Take and all that stuff, but I, I did watch today. Okay. And I have to say, a lot of those guys who have been on the bandwagon for getting him back in the league, the Stephen A's, the Shannon Sharps, everybody, dude, right with you. At this point, he don't need to be in the league. He needs to get some help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the question to bear that they asked, and I want to ask you guys, can you recall any player in any league in their prime, not drug-related, to have fallen from grace no. so quickly. No. No. Flat like, out no. Wanted, not even to you. He was the best wide receiver in the league not too long ago. Like, you want to talk now about. Now he can't like, even sniff a team. Like, even if you bring T.O. up in and the, the conversation. T.O. Really yeah. was never self-destructive no, he like was, this. No. T.O. did sit-ups in a driveway. Yeah, yeah. And he, he had, had a big like, ego. He yeah. was an egomaniac. But he was but not. He was, he was not. And that's the thing is, we can only. Uh, judge what you see on that video, regardless of who says here this yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. But you think that's a good idea to put that on the internet? And you talk like that it, to your kid's your mother kids, with yeah. the kids, right, the kids there. right there. And that's the point. Like, whatever the context is behind it, you talk like that to your kid, to your kid's mother with the kids there, and like that to police officers who held Two a lot of really yeah. strong restraints. They, they showed in that a lot situation. of restraints. Yeah, because they and it's not like the officers were doing anything. And your buddies, AB, and your buddies are sitting there saying, "Yeah," and all the idiots who were following them on Instagram are going, "Yeah, you tell them this and that." Like, that's, come on, bro. They don't have your bad. best interest, AB. That's bad. Yeah, they don't. They don't they have don't. your best interest, AB. And as, it sounds like from your workout with the Saints, you still have talent. Like they said it, they, that you were amazing, but. Dude, nobody's going to touch you with a 10-foot pole, man, because you need he needs to get right. This might be if the he, one thing that, that – this might be the, the straw that broke the camel's back that keeps him out of the league. Yeah. yeah. I would, it's really hard to put because, somebody – Because you figure any owner out there who's married or who has daughters. You're going to But, gonna like, you, had, you sign him. You, you, you sign a person who talks to – There's one owner that could bring him in, and that's Jerry Jones. Well, listen, we all know that. We're going to be wrapping up but, in, a, but, in a minute, yeah. but I want to make this one point, too. Even if you want to, you take what he put there, and he he obviously clearly wanted us to see that. Yeah. yeah. And then if you want to even go back to the context of the text messages with things that he said to women before in the past, mm-hmm. you could all say that's hearsay or this and that. But now I can physically say that I've seen him talk to women that way, and be like, I could totally believe. That this yes. is who the guy is. Yeah. Not an isolated incident. Yeah. This is how he is behind closed doors and yeah. clearly not closed doors anymore. Oh, yeah. And this is how he's talking on camera. On camera. This is, this is how he, you know what I'm saying? Like he knows he's He's not trying safe. to hide it. Matt he's Adams honestly, yeah. When he doesn't want to be on camera. I yeah. looked over at Kevin. I, went, Did you see, <laughs> I don't know if anybody caught me do one of these. So I was like, oh, <laughs> this is a stranger. Who are you? <laughs> who are you? What did you do with Kevin? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is a whole new guy. Yo, whole new guy. Like a skinny McFoley. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Da-na-na. 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 the three faces of Godwin oh, over here. God. <laughs> um, all right, guys, great show. We didn't really get to the Houston stuff, but I'm sure we're gonna hear a lot it's about bad. that on A2D this week. <sighs> Players should be held liable as well. But even though ignorance is not an Well, maybe excuse. next week on uh, No Huddle, we'll dive into that conversation, and that'll be a week removed to see maybe. Maybe Beltron doesn't keep his job. 
Maybe should. something happens, and, and maybe the league doesn't do it, but the Mets hold them accountable for it. So there's going to be a lot that's going to come down. I think that, you know, you're already starting to see the fallout for Boston. He wants to go so bad. We'll continue the conversation <laughs> next week. So a, a week in after digesting all this will be good. Okay. But, guys, listen, thank you very much. Real, real last minute, though, I, I didn't get my predictions. I'm going Kansas City and San Francisco for the Super Bowl. Oh, shocker. I mean, it's, to me, they're the clear-cut two favorites in the playoffs right now. Yep. Um, great show this week. Did Kevin, you give your predi- predictions, thanks, new new guy? Uh, Titans, San Fran. Okay. Okay. I mean, I think we're all pretty much on that. Ryan, you got the fix tomorrow? Yes, sir. All right. Fix. So you hey, uh, agree to disagree tomorrow, too? Uh, AM to PM. AM to PM, I'm sorry. Yep. So, guys, My make bad. sure you check it out. We got Ryan tomorrow with the fix. We got AM <laughs> and the PM. Uh, all kinds of content on A2D, as always, every night. Check us out. Follow us on all our social media. Get on all the podcast platforms, iHeartRadio, Sp- uh, what is all of it? Spreaker. Spreaker. I couldn't remember. I said Spotify. 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 Well, Spotify. Um, Google Play. Google Play. I- iTunes. I- it's not iTunes. It's iTunes. Apple Podcasts. <laughs> iTunes. Whatever. And Guys, we're all over the place. The Before we see you great. next week, I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to take my ass off. Pete Rose for the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> guy loves a guy that... Loves a guy that bangs 15-year-old girls, you crumb. Whoa. Whoa. That's not a legend. Whoa. That's, that's known. Whoa. Censorship. And on that note. Fam, we love you. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.